What I believe is you the United States of America, the Alderman Albert here. Alderman Flores here. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Galloway here. Alderman Hutchinson here. Alderman Owen is absent. Alderman Snyder here. We have five aldermen present. We have four. Thank you. Approval of the minutes from the previous meeting. We just have one set of minutes to approve September 5, 2023. Has everybody had an opportunity to review the minutes from that meeting? Anybody in the book? I move to accept the, the meeting minutes from September 5th, 2023. I second. All right, there is a motion on the floor to approve the minutes. Thank you. There is a motion on the floor to approve the minutes of the September 5, 2023 regular session. And it has been seconded by uh, Alderman Alder, and it was raised by Alderman Flores. All in favor? Motion passes. Ceremonial matters, there are none. I do uh, see that we have one or two people here in the gallery. It's good to see the public here. We appreciate public involvement. I wanted to say a few words about the meeting, if I can do that without feedback. Um, you may know if you voted in the last election that I am not the mayor. The mayor is Don Currents, and Mr. Currents is called away on business. He's the secretary of the Southern Baptist Association, which some people may have heard of. It is a national organization. It requires him at times to leave. We have him most of the time, but he couldn't be here at this meeting. So that is why you are stuck with me this evening. Uh, I'm Bruce Galloway, the mayor pro tem, and that means I was selected by the board to be sort of a second and a substitute for times like this. Um, and mayor pro tem just means temporary. So at the end of the meeting, I become normal. Uh, <clears throat> so let's move to scheduled visitors and guests. There are none. And now we'll move to first reading of bills and resolutions. These bills are open for public discussion. And just a word about that. Uh, what you'll hear is what's known as a first reading. And that means that it's just formally brought before the board. And we don't read the entire bill because that would take forever. We just read the uh, title. Um, then the board will hear a presentation from somebody just to educate us about what's on uh, the uh, bill. The board will usually ask questions of whoever it is that's presenting. And that's just out of tradition. And that sort of helps narrow the issues for us and also for the public that's listening. Um, after that, then it is time for public comment. And then uh, there's a, a stack of paper uh, in the back, I think, uh, where you can put your name, address information, and that's completed. And then anybody may speak on the topic um, in the public set, part of that uh, uh, discussion of the bill. And we just ask that to limit uh, comments to no more than five minutes. That is an actual rule. Um, and if possible, 
if you've heard a point before, you can reference it, but maybe talk about a different point because we do pay very close attention. Um, <clears throat> all right. I see we have the first bill, number 3479. Your Honor, I move that we place bill 3479 on its first reading by title and description only. All right, we have a motion on the floor to place bill number 3479 on its first reading by title only. And that was raised by Alderman Flores. It was seconded by Alderman Alder. All in favor. An ordinance amending the zoning code and official map by changing the zoning classification of certain real property, generally known as a parcel approximately 0.86 acres at 817 North 4th Street. Who will be bringing this up, Mr. Smith? Planning and Development Director Smith. <laughs> Good evening. The application is to rezone approximately 0.86 acres or 37,471 square feet of property from R1A single family residential to RSF1 single family residential. The property currently has a single family residence on it today and it does conform to the zoning request. The existing use also conforms to the requested zoning and the, the existing use today um, or the existing zoning. Any future development shall conform to the city's ordinances and regulations, there are no overlay districts that affect this property or environmental features or concerns. The property is currently serviced by city water and sewer. The comprehensive plan does recommend a future land use of single family residential and the zoning request would conform to the comprehensive plan and the surrounding zoning. Based on staff report and findings, staff does recommend approval and it does conform to the surrounding lot sizes and uses uh, in this neighborhood. The Planning and Zoning Commission did recommend approval, which was approved. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Does anybody on, on the board have any questions for Director Smith? Alderman Alder. Can you just explain to me the difference in the zoning in this? Yeah, the, so if, as you may recall, a, a few months ago, uh, we had RSF or R1A, B, C, and D in our single family zoning. Uh, we recently had uh, uh, set those aside and approved a new zoning for RSF1 and RSF2. And so those were those went dormant. Uh, prior to that, the, the applicant would have been requested like an R1 or R1A, R1B, R1C, R1D. To the east is R1C, and to the surrounding them is R1A. Uh, so since the new ordinance has went in place, the only option that they can select is RSF1 and RSF2. And so he has chose to select RSF1. Uh, the R1A allows a minimum of 20,000 square foot lot size. Uh, for example, R1C to the east allows for a 10,000. The RSF1, which is the only option that they could select to compare, would allow for 8,000 square foot lots. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions from the board? Are there any comments from the public that are present here today? I see, I do see a hand. If you could, can you come up and then announce your name and your address, uh, please, and approach the podium there? Well, my name is Julie. I live across the street from this lot. Um, I was just wondering if it means just one home will be built on the lot or if it's going to be cabins or is it just allowed for one home? Okay, and we'll uh, get an answer to your question. If you could provide your address, though, for our clerk. 812 North 4th Street. Okay. Uh, Director Smith. I'll, add, I'll answer that and then allow, allow the applicant to answer anything I misspoke. Um, right now, there, there is an existing home. This would allow him to divide the property to build a, a another home or a second home, uh, but it would be single family residential only. No, no uh, like multi-type family. It would be single family residence. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I see by you're nodding that answered your question. Is, is there anybody else in the audience that's here today that will speak in favor of this bill? Do we have anybody on the internet? All right. With there being nobody online and nobody in the audience that wishes to add comment, we will close discussion for bill number 3479 and move on to our next bill, number 3480. And it does say on the agenda, I should have said this before, that uh, Drew Owen, Alderman Drew Owen, would be reading, but uh, he is absent today. Alderman, uh, who is here to speak on this? Alderman Flores. Uh, Your Honor, I move that we place Bill 3480 on its first reading by title and description only. We have a motion on the floor to place Bill number 3480 on its first reading by title and description only. It was made by Alderman Flores, was seconded by Alderman Alder. All in favor. An ordinance amending the zoning code and official map by changing the zoning classification of certain real property, generally known as a parcel approximately 14.35 acres at 716 North 14th Street. Director Smith. <laughs> Yes, the application is to uh, rezone approximately 14.35 acres for R1C single family residential to R4 high density multifamily residential. The property currently has a single family residence on it today and does conform to the existing zoning. Any future development shall conform to the city code and ordinances, whether it is rezoned or not. There are no overlay districts or environmental features that affect this property. The city has determined we have adequate capacity to serve future development of this property, such as water and sewer. The future development would require the developer to extend uh, public utilities to this property and, com and comply with the city standards and requirements. The property would further be would be further evaluated by staff and our engineers once the developer has proceeded on with any kind of development. Compliance uh, to the design standards and documentations would have to be submitted as well. In addition, during the time of development, staff would work with the developer and the Ozark Special Road District to evaluate the existing traffic, future projected traffic, and stormwater uh, concerns or requirements. Uh, based on the findings of those studies would determine what future improvements would be required by the developer. Um, the requested zoning will require buffer yards between the adjacent properties per the city ordinances, the comprehensive plan does note the future land use as single family residential based on the existing use that stands there today. The requested zoning of R4 would offer a traditional or transitional type zoning between the single family residential and any future commercial development along the, the highway corridor. The requested zoning would also offer housing diversity, affordable housing alternatives, and additional multifamily options in the city of Ozark. Based on staff reports and findings, staff did recommend approval. The planning zoning made a recommendation of approval, which was denied or failed at the planning zoning meeting. Following the planning zoning meeting, the developer has met with a few of the neighboring residents and supplied recommended conditions that they would like the, to be considered with the application per our conditional overlay ordinance that has been adopted. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Does any member of the board have a question for Director Smith? Uh, Alderman Snyder. Planning and zoning did reject this. Is that correct? That, that is correct. It was union. You, they recommended their motion was to recommend approval. It failed 8 0. Why are we here? They still make a recommendation to the board. It doesn't stop there. It's just a recommendation to the board of aldermen for the, the public hearing. I know. I'm just curious as to, uh, have we done any homework as to the traffic impacts or anything like that? Again, this is just a zoning application. Once they get in design and know how many units there will be, their full plan, that's when the traffic study re requirement would be in effect. Okay. No more right now. No more questions. Um, 
Thank you, Alderman Thank you. Steiner. Any other board member that wishes to ask a question of Director Smith? I, in addition to being Mayor Pro Tem, I'm also a board member, so I get to vote and ask questions. Okay. Um, <clears throat> That, that's a good that's a good question. And um, there was a, just a little bit of discussion here uh, out of hearing of the audience. And it was just to assure the everybody here, we are following process. There's a first reading of the bill that happens in this meeting. There's no voting, there's just discussion. And then the next meeting, it will be held over for the next meeting. And that's when there is discussion by board only in a vote. Thank you, Alderman Alder, for. Uh, uh, raising that. Uh, Director Smith, uh, the, the city had recommended the uh, zoning change. Uh, what was, what are the top three reasons that the city, from the staff point of view, uh, uh, has to support that? The, the staff would always evaluate kind of the existing trends of development, what we're seeing as far as applications. We look at the conference of plan, taking that in consideration as a guiding document and seeing what the requests have been going on around the city and the current construction. Uh, in evaluating this property, knowing that the uh, Jackson Street corridor or Highway 14 corridor is ideally geared toward a commercial type development and evaluating the location of this property in proximity to that corridor, uh, and having some single family staff evaluate this as a, a way to offer up a transitional type zoning between a, a high intensity commercial development that could occur along the corridor and the single family to the north. Uh, and evaluating that, that was one of the reasons of, of making that determination. Uh, and, then, and then knowing that the conference plan is a guiding document, uh, when that was completed back in late 2018, adopted 2019, uh, the construction trend or the development trend and request for housing has changed greatly. And so trying to keep that in mind and what we're seeing as a nationwide trend of trying to offer some additional housing, uh, some diversity of housing, offering a what we call a missing middle of, a, of an alternative type housing of multifamily and knowing that our multifamily opportunities are not uh, uh, available currently in the city. And then when they do become available, they fill up fairly quickly. This would also offer a, an affordable alternative to a single family resident, as well as offering an opportunity that we see continual requests of, of owners just don't want to own a larger lot and maintain those around a single family residential structure. So Thank that's you. that's kind of the process we evaluate as we went through this. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And you do look at it from a, a technical perspective. I just wanted to yeah. to clarify yeah. uh, uh, the reasons. Um, <clears throat> uh, it, it sounds as if the it is based on a consideration that uh, it would be transitional and thus encourage commercial development. Was that what you were saying? Sorry, it's what just it would, it would, it's a, it would encourage commercial development by having not that I, this would encourage, but as we see a, 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 a trend and knowing that our primary corridors are geared more for commercial, it would offer a somewhat of a buffer between single family and a commercial use that would could occur to the south of this property, and then. <clears throat> Okay, so not encouraged, but the thought was there would be commercial that would develop along Jackson, and the idea would be this is close to Jackson and transitional and appropriate for multifamily. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and I would add that we do take into consideration of the proximity of the schools, knowing that it would offer a, a walkability to the, the, the tenants or, or childs uh, near that school um, in that area. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, the other reason that I heard was, uh, uh, I think the idea is to, I think you said a diversity of housing uh, uh, to encourage, uh, I guess, a different different uh, rental uh, uh, price points. Is that the idea of it? That's that's what we generally see on the on a multifamily side. The 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 price per month generally does decrease to offer an opportunity there. But we are seeing that our, our current uh, multifamily units are being fully leased or rented before they're completed. And so it does offer an opportunity there that is a need for the city. 
you did say that the comprehensive plan did not call for the zoning change. No, it, it made reference to the existing single family resident and did note it to be recommended as single family. So that is recommended in the, in the comprehensive, comprehensive plan. Yeah. And then what you're saying is that uh, time, that the situation has changed since the comprehensive plan was put into place? Yeah, what we're seeing as a whole and evaluating surrounding communities or nationwide, watching the planning forms and things, there is a trend and a need for uh, multifamily housing or what, again, what we call a missing middle. And then trying to blend those with single family, multifamily, and even tying into mixed use type developments. Uh, again, it, it offers a, a more diversity and does not encourage diversity. And then the, my final question, I'm so sorry to uh, uh, keep prodding, but I, I did want to understand the the argument for it. Uh, but, but the the entire area, though, is single family, right? Well, to the, the north and the east, but to the south and west, there's more of an undeveloped land. Okay, so it'd be, well, the woodland and barn and yeah, pasture. Yeah. That, 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 is in the, that area is in the county and is undeveloped at this time. Otherwise, the residences are single family. Yes, to the east and north, yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah. In light of my questioning, does anybody else have a question for Director Smith? Alderman Flores. Uh, to the north and to the east, um, is that R1? It's R1C as well. It's, it's all R1C. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, the, and right now, the parcel we're looking at is also it's zone existing R1C. R1C, yes. And with the changing this over, is, he, is uh, the plans duplexes, I assume? or The multifamily, uh, they, they provide, I believe, conditions in front of you. Uh, it looks like up to 10 units per building, not to go at a full apartment scale. Our R3 zoning allows up to eight units per building, so that's why they possibly chose the R4, because uh, you can do that. Uh, they did cap out the maximum of two stories of height. Um, and they did note about uh, they don't in, in, don't intend to build full apartments in that those three conditions that, that you have in front of you. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions from any board member? Alderman Hutchinson. Just a broad question. When you're looking at transitional areas, do you consider the topography of the land? I mean, on a map, it looks like flat land. Yeah. But we, that, we do consider that, but usually it's more of just thinking ahead of it when time comes for stormwater. But we do look at it more of an environmental feature. Again, that, that would come into play more when they go to develop and know what kind of density they can get. Zoning-wise, you really consider it more of about the use of the land and the zoning of dirt, not necessarily the details and getting into the, the specifics of topography. But we know that they will probably have the stormwater detention draining to a natural drainage way or in a lower area. Uh, we know that there are some property fees that they'll have to consider when they go into full design. I guess my question had more to do particularly with this topography because that's at the top of a hill where the commercial strip will be at the bottom of a hill. And it seems like that's almost a natural it, transition. Yeah. It, it does transition down as you, you go down. But at this point in time, we don't know the specifics of that future development that could occur. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the board? All right, then I will open it up to the public. First, I will ask uh, in the audience, is there anybody here that wishes to speak on behalf of the bill? That means for the bill. Yes, sir. If you could approach the podium, please. And then if you could provide your full name to the clerk along with your address. Sorry. Full name and what? And your address. My name is Mitch Richardson and my address is 304 Green Tree Road, Rolla, Missouri. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm representing the uh, proposed purchaser of the property. Um, so he's proposing for a conditional overlay for the property to <clears throat> only allow up to 10 units per building, um, no more than two stories. And um, sorry. And 
to reduce from apartments to just townhomes for the conditional overlay. And I do see that I was, uh, before the meeting, I was handed a uh, note from the city administrator, I believe. And uh, it does say um, a proposed conditional overlay, uh, reduced height to no more than two stories, reduced units per building to no more than 10, and reduced from apartment buildings to townhomes. That's correct. Is there anything else that you would like to say in support of this bill? Um, just that uh, there's a need for multifamily in, you know, Ozark and other surrounding areas. Um, outside of that, that's about all I've got to say. Are there, in light of that, are there any questions from the board? Alderman Snyder. <laughs> Have you spoken to any of the residents that live in the area? Yes, I have. What's the general consensus? Um, the general consensus that I got is that they are not wanting R4 uh, at all. Um, I was asked why we're not proposing for R3. Um, and the only reason that we're not proposing for R3 is just because we need the, the way that the land lays the furthest south is where we're trying to build um, from that property line moving toward the north about 500 feet roughly. Um, we're proposing between 40 and 50 units. Um, and <clears throat> in order to keep that, that build towards the, the south, that's why we're proposing for up to 10 units per building. If you've ever been to that property that that property has a very good view. It's high up on the hill. And as you go towards the north, you're going to lose that view. I operate a school bus up 14th every day. I know what these folks have. I see their view. They don't want it disturbed. But my question to you is, have you asked them about single family housing? We have another plan that it and again yes. so i'm not putting you on the spot because i know that you're working for someone else but the single family can, can you tell me what what their ideas were with that or what their input was so i think that they want single family um that's the take that i got from it um but i i, I can't really say too much on that you know i mean it's I'm understanding that they that they would rather see single family than multifamily. Um, I just the understand that is that they want something similar to what's already there. Can you not provide that to them? That's that's not my decision. Uh, that would be that would be up to Keith. Um. Just out of curiosity, did you have the opportunity to meet with these folks within the last couple of weeks to yes. discuss anything? Uh, last week on Thursday. What was the uh, what was the feeling with that meeting? That they did not want R four. Do you blame them? Uh, I think that they are not understanding what the conditions are. I mean, because. I, there were several people that say that, you know, why don't you just propose for R3? And R3 is up to eight units per building. And it's very similar to what we're proposing. We're just asking for two more units per building. And that's why we're asking for the conditional overlay for the R4. Well, in reference to my earlier question uh, that I had previous to this, have you taken into consideration the impact, the traffic that's going to be in there? I understand that. And Given the size of the property, um, I think that either direction that it goes, even if it was to be built up in single family houses, you could see possibly up to 60 houses in there being built and you're going to have just as much traffic in there. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Snyder. Any other board questions? 
I, I did have uh, a couple. Um, when you last met with the residents, approximately how many were there? I think there was probably 15 residents that showed up. I, I didn't take account, to be honest with you. And, and did you go over the conditional overlay district conditions with the people who did attend? I did. Okay. Um, I think I got a packet in the in the mail. I think it was certified, um, and I believe it had said that uh, there would be a uh, move to get, uh, I guess, affordable housing with lower rents. Is, did I, did, am I remembering that correctly? I don't believe so. That's actually a different piece different of property. Development. Yeah. That's why I ask questions. Yeah. Um, yeah. Different piece of property. Okay. Thank you. I don't have any further questions. In light of my question, anybody else from the board? All right. Thank you, sir. I believe there's somebody else here to speak. Oh, on. To speak in favor. Very good. Yes. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. If you could say your full name and your address. Hi, I'm Melissa Burke. I live at I live at 714 North 14th Street. Yes, ma'am. Um, I I know this is very upsetting to my neighbors. Um. You know, ideally, I would love to live there and retire and stay there, but the economy's got you know, ridiculous. I, um, I'm taking care of 14 acre or I've done it for 14 years. I've taken care of this 14 acres and I love it. I have a heart for it. My family's been there, had that land for 150, 200 years. I mean, my heart's in it, but it's too much for me to take care of. So I've got to make, I had to make a decision. I, I prayed about it and I feel like this is what I'm supposed to do. Um, I, I prayed about it, and this opportunity come at, came up with my son's father-in-law to go ahead and, and purchase the land, and it was ideal because I have these beautiful neighbors. I have, I have Bill and his wife. They run their horse. I run my horses on the property, and they could still run their horses. We could still run our horses on part of the property, pretty much the property that we run our horses on now. So I thought it was ideal. The neighbors would still have the tree block that would block them, so they would hardly even see the townhouses. And I and I know I do, I guess ideally they want houses backed up and kids screaming and dogs barking in their backyard. I I don't understand, or maybe they don't understand. I I would love for us to come to some kind of compromise. Um, you know, um. That's the other option is that I sell and we we put houses and and Bill has barking dogs and kids in his backyard instead of his horse and I I that isn't what I want. Um, you know this this overlay we put on it and this restriction there will never be apartments and I'm nervous about apartments. I know because these have already been to the planning and zoning for the county about doing an R4 on their property. I'm scared about it. So I understand your fear. I totally understand your fear. Um, I'm nervous about what's gonna go in across the street, um, but, I, but I don't have any hard feelings towards them. They have to do what they have to do. That's their property. I don't have the money to purchase it. Um, so I, I don't want everybody to be mad at me. I want to find a good compromise. Um, but it's just too much for me to take care of. And um, I guess that's what I have to say. So thank you for listening. Okay. Oh, thank you. You guys, oh, do you guys have any questions? Any questions from the board? I don't believe so. Thank okay. you, ma'am. Thank you. Anybody else that's in the audience that wishes to speak in favor of the bill? How about online? So no comments online. Now uh, we will open it up to the public for those people speaking in opposition to the bill. Is there anybody here in the audience that wishes to speak in opposition? I, one person raised their hand ahead of you, sir. So we'll go in order of who I see and then the red shirt standing up. Steve. 
My name is Shane Brocate, and I live at 1149 North 14th Street. And I just wanted to clarify one of their comments too. I'm on the west side of the road, so this is actually surrounded three ways by single family residential, not two. Um, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Shane Brocate, and I live directly across the street from the proposed rezoning. I'm here today with my neighbors as a concerned member of the Ozark community. I appreciate the opportunity to address you. Regarding this proposed rezoning, which would allow for the construction of high density housing, including high rise apartments. In 2015, during a search for the perfect piece of land to build a home I could live, retire, and plant permanent roots in, I stumbled upon a rolling hillside on North 14th Street with a look and feel of country living, but the convenience and access of something right in town. I think this not only describes the property that I live at, but it describes Ozark as a whole. I stand before you today along with my neighbors because I feel like our community and especially the single family home neighborhood I chose to build within stands at a crucial crossroads. I appreciate and echo the concerns that you're going to hear from my neighbors, but I want to focus my time here bringing your attention to some key points that align with our 2019 Ozark Comprehensive Plan, which was created uh, in collaboration with city officials, but also residents of Ozark, which I think is important in this case because of how it's planned. Um, zoning alignment. The current zoning of this property reflects our single family residential neighborhood. The proposed rezoning to R4 district not only contradicts our established R1C district, but also deviates from the 2019 comprehensive plan vision of using transitional zoning. Um, he mentioned transitional zoning earlier, um, and I also wanted to clarify that it's intended to transition from R4 to R3 to R2 and then to R1. That's what those other districts are for, not to go from commercial to R4 to R1. Um, future land use, um, our city's comprehensive plan specifically outlines the future land use for various zones across all of Ozark. And this uh, specific area, as he mentioned, was, was specified now and in the future uh, as single family residential. Um, the, the plan also aims to di direct future de development zones um, already laid out in this plan. Um, to minimize impact on single family and low density neighborhoods. And I think to call the, the Cassie land there as undeveloped land, it's, it's agriculture, it's single family residential as well. So I don't, I don't think that's appropriate. Um, preserving the heritage and character, our city and its elected officials uh, commitment to preserving the heritage and character is evident in the policies and promises that you guys have made. The small town atmosphere was overwhelmingly the number one reason why people enjoy living in Ozark, according to the 2019 uh, comprehensive plan survey that they did. Introducing high density multi-story apartment complexes that tower over this, this hillside and the iconic skyline, the red barn that everybody knows. Um, it's a rep representation of our heritage and community and it would contradict this pledge that you guys have made, altering the skyline and landscape of Ozark in ways that compromise the very essence of our city. Um, in closing, you know, we're not against progress. Um, I would say, you know, to, to clarify, because I was not at the meeting with, with the developer, but I would be opposed to R4 and R3. Um, but, you know, this is this is about an R4 zoning and, and you know, they can say that they only want to, you know, develop part of that land. Well, then I say propose developing that part of the land or change your proposal to what you're actually gonna develop and not try to make promises to us that may or may not hold up later in the future. Um, you know, R3 and R4 zoning definitely have their place here in Ozark and it's it's you know probably a need, um, but square in the middle of a single family neighborhood surrounded on three sides, um, that's not the place for it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, still open for public discussion. I know there were hands that were next, and and that I'm getting pointed to a bad view. <laughs> they seem to want you to talk. Uh, you did have your arm up though, and and I am calling you because of that. But sure. please come up and your you. name and address. Please. Sure. Hi, my name is Casey Brower, and uh, my family and I live at thirteen zero four West Parkview. Um, right here, our, our house will actually back up. Um, our backyard will overlook this uh, proposed development. So um, I'm here tonight along with my neighbors. Um, thank you for having us and for hearing us out, giving us this space. Um, we are obviously in strong opposition of the rezoning to R4. 
Prior to purchasing our home in 2019, we were not Ozark residents. I grew up in Jeff City um, and I chose to bring my family here to plant our roots because of what we saw in Ozark. Um, we did research, we do our due diligence and we did review the Ozark comprehensive plan. Um, we actually identified with the visioning statement um, the most when we were choosing to plant our roots here. It says, looking forward, the city plans to refocus on managing growth in a way that is smart, well-planned and preserves the unique character and heritage of Ozark. If this rezoning amendment passes, like I said, our backyard will then overlook high density housing, which will present obviously a variety of negative impacts for my family, um, as well as our neighbors. But I think the most important pieces for me would be the safety and security issues that I see um, presented. When we, uh, we use the trail system all the time. I have two little girls, they're six and almost three. We walk everywhere that we can. That's why we love Ozark. Um, we use the, the newly renovated trail system, the one that we've poured a lot of money and energy into. And I can tell you, um, all nearby any R4 existing um, zoned properties that have the high density housing, you're going to find broken glass, vandalism, trash, um, I won't even let my, my three-year-old walk because she still falls and I'm worried she's going to get glass in her knees. Um, so if, if you haven't seen that for yourself, I'd encourage you to take a look, go for a walk um, on our trails and see what that's like, because those are the kind of things that we're going to be seeing as we grow in this way. Um, the other thing is walkability was mentioned as a, a reason for this location. And, and I'm here to tell you that the walkability is dangerous and hazardous currently on 14th Street nearby the high school. Um, I have specific routes that I take with my kids because of the high traffic. Um, we've heard about school buses. I see the Oats um, transportation buses. Uh, we've got agricultural equipment that runs up and down those roads. It's already hazardous. And we're talking about adding a lot of additional traffic to that. Um, Another thing that I just wanted to mention is that we're invested in pouring sweat equity into our home. We're proud of where we live. We're proud of this community. And we love that we are here and raising our family here. Um, the, the developer currently creating these plans presents a handful of concerns that go beyond the initial certified mail that I got. Um, he mentioned that he's met with our, our neighbors and I think that was great. The problem and the red flags that I see and I'd like for you all to just do your due diligence before you make a decision on this is that there's public information out there. And one red flag I see is that this LLC was formed in May of 2023. It's 112 days old. So we're talking about being the guinea pig potentially here in a very, um, very historic area, part of Ozark um, that could present an abundance of concerns. Um, but that's one of them. The other thing that I think that we should just take note of is the passive aggressive demeanor of both the, the developer, the seller, anyone involved, um, it's been really discouraging. Um, and, and I think you can just figure that out for yourselves. I, I think that those red flags just, they, they hurt a little bit coming from your own neighbors. Um, by placing more high density housing though, um, that's gonna be used as multifamily rental homes, something I, I would also encourage you to look into. There's a lot of data that shows that home ownership has a direct correlation with a reduction of alcoholism, drug addiction, um, divorce rate, the high school dropout rate. And so by adding these homes, it's almost gonna maybe be counterproductive to our community and the people who we're raising to be members of our community in the future. Um, so I'd encourage you to think about that and just remember that just because we can doesn't mean we should. Um, so the last thing I want to close with is just this. Um, you have a really big decision sitting in front of you that will impact more than just the neighbors. It will impact the kids who drive to school at the high school, the OIC, get dropped off at the junior high, the walkers, the agriculture, um, farmers. And um, I just ask that you think about this and, and, and remember just because we can does not mean we should. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening. Uh, if you, my name is Rick Johnson. I live at 711 North 13th Street in Ozark. And I've lived there for 35 years. And I know the property of that land and the comment one of the aldermen made about the hillside and all that. I have fought the water there for 35 years. My neighbors and I have spent 
thousands and thousands of dollars tried to mediate the water that currently comes from the development to the north of the proposal. And we almost get flooded out every time it rains today. I can't imagine what it's going to be like with other. The um, other uh, development that's north, uh, the North Town Park development, the neighbors there raised concern about that also before that was built. And uh, the water retention berm failed in that development. Uh, the concern was made to the alderman, but it passed anyway. And there was many, many basements that were flooded and there was lots and lots of water damage from that development also. The thing that I I'm concerned about not only about what has been told before, but this is a 50 year old community. And we've invested in our houses and everything. And I'm not against progress, but you don't build R4 right in the middle of a 50 year old neighborhood. And I just would ask that you really, really look at it and do your due diligence on this. And uh, I thank you for your time. And uh, I think it needs to be looked at real hard. And I agree with Mr. Snyder in the fact that uh, planning and zoning 100% voted it down when they heard of our concerns. And when I walked out from planning and zoning, the first words out of my mouth, was exactly what Mr. Snyder said. Why are we here? Thank you very much. Anybody else in favor, sir? Yeah. My name is Mark Miller and my wife, Amanda Miller, we're here. We live at 1251 North 14th Street. Uh, at the intersection of 14th and Parkview. Uh, I'm going to ditto pretty much what everybody else has said, but there's a few things I want you to think about as well during this uh, in terms of if this turns to R4. The traffic we have now is uh, can be somewhat overwhelming at times in the mornings, uh, afternoons, evenings with the new innovation center that has been built for people to try to turn left or right on the North 14th Street with Dozens of cars, school buses every day coming up down that road. Uh, there are a lot of kids that walk. Um, I'm sure Mr. Snyder seen this too as a bus driver. Uh, the high school cross country team runs back in our neighborhood. We already have, and how this happens is because the northern part of 14th Street is county. We now have semis coming up and down our road. How they get up the S curve on at Kissy's Land to get up there without going to the ditch, I have no idea. But you know what it's like when you meet cars on this road as it is now. And it's, I mean, you have to slow down to nothing. The special roads district this year so far in April mowed the right of way once on uh, the street. It's four or five foot tall right now. You add a bunch more high density housing, apartments, townhouses, whatever uh, they may potentially put in there. Uh, people aren't going to sit. You can sit there 10 minutes right now if you're behind four or five cars trying to turn left or right onto Jackson Street off of 14th, North 14th Street. People are going to find the back way out that goes to the access road, which is where the children and kids are rocking or the cross-country team is running. You're going to add a tremendous amount of traffic to a very, uh, what could be somewhat busy at certain times of the day uh, neighborhood anyway with cars, school buses dropping kids off, the Yotes bus is picking up senior citizens for activities or appointments or whatever they're doing. Uh, anyway, like I said, I am, I'm a businessman and I, I'm all about, you know, growth, but there's a place for it. And where this is at right now uh, with the road system that we have on North 14th Street, it is not a, a good option just because of the safety issues we got to, got to, got to face. In the 17 years that I have lived there, uh, I have several walnut trees with it two or three feet off the street. I've had cars get totaled by hitting my walnut trees because they did not slow down to oncoming cars. And what's gonna happen if we had hundreds more cars every day making trips that are going the back way or even onto Jackson, 
uh, for the safety of the, the kids who do walk or the school buses that are coming up and down our street. And I'm not sure what the situation was the other day, but I know we just had another bus accident on Jackson Street between the Innovation Center and the Junior High, which is right where North 14th Street is at. Uh, please consider not letting this be R4 uh, or even R3 for that matter and keep it R1. Family homes are one thing because there's ownership in those homes. Even if they are rental homes, there's typically more accountability to people who are renting a home rather than just apartments or townhomes. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Jim Price. I live at 1199 North 14th Street. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to voice our concerns this evening. I think uh, Ms. Hodges has a petition that about 50 of my neighbors signed that uh, can be uh, looked at later for you to deliberate. Some of the folks that uh, wanted their voice to be heard couldn't be here tonight. So I just ask that you take a look at the, at the petition as well as all the, the neighbors behind me. As you can see, this is an issue troubling the entire community. My neighbors have discussed the application for rezoning does not conform to the city's comprehensive plan. It's likely to create an increased risk for pedestrians in a neighborhood with narrow streets and no sidewalks. They talked about the potential for a significant loss of privacy, fear of water runoff, and the reduction of green space that is vital to our collective health. Large development on the proposed location will also contribute to noise and light pollution. When we expressed these concerns to the Planning and Zoning Commission, they heard us and unanimously voted not to recommend approval for the rezoning application. We hope that you, our elected officials, will hear us, hear us tonight. We feel that the landowner should have all the freedom to, to use the land how they see fit, but we also believe that all the people in the surrounding area have the freedom to pursue happiness and feel safe in their neighborhood. Uh, one of my uh, neighbors already spoke about the school bus incident that happened. Uh, it was just a matter of time. It was We were lucky that nobody was hurt, but nobody in the neighborhood was surprised that it happened. When you see uh, so many young drivers, high school students driving from the high school to the IOC or OIC constantly throughout the day, it was just, it was a, it's a ticking time, time bomb. Uh, and it was, you know, fortunately we got lucky this time. The possibility of adding another 100 or 120 cars to the neighborhood is deeply concerning. While it is true that there is another exit out of the neighborhood with the expansion of the Chadwick Flyer Trail during phase four, the traffic that is trying to avoid 14th Street will be, then become a potential danger to hikers and cyclists as they try to cross the intersection at 17th and Clay Street. We have heard the development plan and we're still concerned. For starters, the plan seems to change frequently. What was discussed at the planning and zoning meeting was very different than what I had uh, during a private discussion with the developer. And that was also different than the developers meeting with, with the neighbors. Uh, during the planning and zoning meeting, we were told that the townhouses that were gonna be built on the south end of the property was phase one. And we're going to see what else fits after those are completed. There was also never any discussion about affordable housing. It was never discussed. When I talked to the developer, he told me that the price of each unit would be between eighteen and two thousand dollars a month. The only thing that is clear in this whole plan is they plan to cram as many units as possible that will fit on the land, even with the conditional overlay that would prohibit any building over two stories tall, we are concerned about a significant increase in population that will outstrip the infrastructure to support it. If any issues arise that stymie the, the current developers plan to build townhomes and R4 zoning leaves open the possibility for a different developer to come in and build substantially more than was discussed tonight. We respectfully ask that you not approve the application for high density housing and request that you retain the current zoning of R1C. It is congruent with the rest of the neighborhood that has been there for many, many years, and is also consistent with the current comprehensive plan. 
We ask that you can carefully deliberate on this and all future developments planned for the city. Do you want Ozark to be America's hometown or not? Do you want to retain the small town charm that attracts visitors and shoppers? Or do you want to go the ways, the way of cities like Florissant and Kearney, small towns with unique character and rich histories that have been diminished by the encroachment of their large city neighbors? Thank you. My name is Chris Webster. I've lived here for 31 years, and we are the heartbeat of Ozark. I want to thank each and every one of you for your service up here. I know it's not easy. You have to make a lot of decisions up here, and I hope that thoughtful decisions can be made on this particular uh, uh, situation here with this R4 that is just overrunning this property. I'm here with my neighbors who all live here close to this area. They're all homeowners. They're the heart of those are the homeowners are. We're vested in Ozark. We're vested in the direction that Ozark goes. We're not in Rolla. We live here. And so we want our community to grow in the appropriate direction. The Chadwick Flyer Trail, wow. You know, what, what a great addition to our city. The mill, that benefits a lot of people. They, you know, to have that restored and have that as an area to, to go eat. The OC, wow, you know, and the, the trails around there, putting a high density development in the middle of single family homes that are running some people out of their homes because they don't want to deal with the mess. They don't want to deal with traffic. They don't want to deal with the, the crime rate. And also, what, what kind of property management are we going to have? When we look down the road 10, 15 years, What's that going to look like? I can tell you some places in Ozark that have been there for a while that are high density that look awful. There's couches out along the street. There's trash piled up. That's not the direction that we need. 50 units with 10 per unit of these townhouses. What just a low ball average of two people per unit. We're going to dump a thousand people out onto Jackson Street. In the morning when kids are trying to get to school, that's going to be a danger, and it's going to affect all of those are. That is a main artery, and that dumps right out there on a little narrow street that I don't know how in the world they would be able to accommodate that sort of traffic. I, I implore you to make a good decision with this. Making that into a high-density area is just, it's it's a bad idea, and it's bad for all of those are. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster, you forgot to give me an important detail. Oh, sorry. What? Your address, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. 800 North 13th. So I live adjacent to the area in that neighborhood adjacent to where they're going to develop Thank at. Thank you, sir. You bet. Any other members of the audience? Yes, sir. Uh, Josh, tuning 1000 North 25th. Uh, here is our... Obviously, don't live in this subdivision, but um, this, I brought this uh, topic up a while back, a year ago. Um, this isn't the first multi-unit uh, that's being built in a subdivision of R1 homes. Um, I guess I would like to say this is a really good opportunity for us to look at how we let things like this happen. Um, in Ozark, right, where we keep our smart small town charm feel, but at the same time accommodate growth because we do have an amazing school district and we have so many great things that bring people to Ozark. But this is a great opportunity for us to look and maybe reevaluate where we let these multi unit homes um, come in because it's going to end up turning, I can see it turning into. The same situation that's on 20th right now. We got 400 apartment complexes going in and a busy, dangerous on top of that road that all this traffic is going to be on now. Um, I know that Mr. Smith said that after it's rezoned, we can look at traffic studies. I feel like that's backwards. I feel like traffic studies should be paid for by the builder if they want to do that. 
um, before we rezone it because, I mean, I, I could see it being like 20th Street. I can't accommodate the amount of vehicles that are going to be at that apartment complex. That road is not ready for that. And to mention an entrance on a very Sir, dangerous you direct your attention to the development that we are talking Correct. about. Correct. So my point is, this development is going to be a lot like that one, I feel like, and that us as a city should look at how we are doing this. And, and I don't agree that it has to go there. Um, and I don't live there. I'm just a resident that sees their issues with it, wanting, with them wanting to put that they're not to mention the fact they're from Rolla. They're going to build it and he's not even here. So that's a red flag for me. They, there's a million other acres they could be building these on why that piece of land why right there where they could go south they could go other areas with it um i just think it's a good opportunity for us to really take a good look at how we are zoning some of this stuff and, and letting some of this stuff um happen here in town without a lot of other things being looked at before we uh, approve a, a, a rezoning of a piece of property so this is my two cents thank you thank you Yes, ma'am. Lindsdow, live at 2225 North 20th Street. I don't live in this neighborhood, but I feel for these folks, and I just want to say a few words. I listened very intently to what Cameron Smith had to say. The pros on the side of this development are that we are looking to provide more of the multifamily because we don't have enough or impossibly. Does anyone on the board know how many apartment buildings are in the city limits factually, or anybody know how many apartment live buildings we already have rented, full capacity possibly? Do we have a number for the ones that are close to the city? And for I know just in the two miles I drove from my home to this meeting, I probably passed eight apartment buildings. Now I didn't count them, so I could be incorrect. I'm making a bit of a guess there but there's a lot. I do happen to live right in front of a huge apartment building being built. Four buildings, 12 units per floor, four. I direct your comments though to this development. Okay. I, I do Just appreciate- wanting to say this is, when it goes to our floor, it could very well change because three years ago, my husband and I and the neighborhood we live near we're in the same exact position these folks are in, and everything went as planned as your city government is designed to do, and the plans changed multiple times. The property sold multiple times. It started out going to be duplexes. So all I'm saying is, have we looked at how many apartment buildings are already here in the city? Is there really a need to go fast forward to building the apartments? We're looking at 192 units that aren't done, that aren't rented yet, that'll be in the process of being rented, but we don't know when that is. It's already started. Do we have to go? I mean, I know it takes several years to get to the final product. We know that because we live right in front of how long it's taken so far to get to what we see now. It isn't just, hey, we're providing an apartment building for people to come into our community. It's also the impact that it it takes upon, and the toll it takes upon all of us who are already here. My property that I live in currently is historic, but there was never any one thing said about putting something ultra modern right behind it. And you're looking at the same thing here, so it is similar. That's why I'm bringing it up. All I'm up here to ask is that when is enough enough? How many apartment buildings do we have to have before we slow it down? Let's work on some roads. Let's work on the schools. Let's work on all of these other places that are being impacted right now that aren't being taken care of. The road where those apartments are that I live now is a mess and it's only gonna get worse. This is a really high traffic area that you're talking about now. It's not gonna get better unless you think about those things first. I know you have to have a budget. I know you have to have a plan in advance, but please, when you do get to that point in your city planning, you do think about all of those things. I would prefer, or I would just ask that you think about all of us residents that we're here now, who've made Ozark our home, who love Ozark for lots and lots of reasons, 
who are not against progress, but even in my case, it would have been better to have single family homes right next to my house on a 10 acre plot, 192 residents. I'm sorry, that was inappropriate. Anybody else to speak about this development? Yes, sir. Uh, my name's Lee Tharp. I'm 6052 Deer Run Court. Uh, without getting in the weeds, you guys have talked this thing. We've got all the traffic, the, the trash, everything else, whatever you want to talk about. The thing that bothers me is we're looking at a country right now that we have lost all trust in our institutions. You guys had a plan you developed four years ago. Let's, let's keep our trust with our people and stay by the plan. It's that simple. It's, it's not a 30 year old plan. It's one that was just done. All this work went into it, all this planning, all the input, just let's at least maintain the trust that we can have trust in our own local government. We can't seem to do anything in DC. So let's at least keep our community uh, where we believe in our government here local. That's all. Yes, sir. Yeah, my name is John Sheeler. I live at 1306 West Parkview Street. And I do get Melissa, it's her property, why she can't do what she wants with it. But it, in a meeting they had just the other day, they said, well, we'll just build 60 homes in it. I know that land, I know building, I know dirt, that's me, concrete. They could probably get about 32 houses in that land after the roads, tension ponds. And they're trying to pass up to R4 so they can drive the price of the land up because you really cannot make money building houses on that piece of property. I don't even want to see an R3. Single family homes is what that should be there. And it kind of sucks for Melissa, but it's just kind of where I stand on it. I just know land and that kind of stuff. But that's why they're trying to get this zone R4 because you will see what's up there at Mulberry Ridge. It will happen. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, this gentleman, I saw his hand first. <laughs> but I will see your name. <laughs> Hello, my name is David Rogers. I live at 1298 West Parkview. Um, I just have a, I don't know if we're allowed to ask questions. This gentleman here, Mr. Smith. Um, actually, if you could just direct your comments okay. to the board. All right. I have, what I'm concerned with is the view and uh, what R4, if it passes, hopefully it won't, how high they'll go. They say the overlay stops it at two. Can an overlay be rescinded? What I've read, if the code changes, an overlay can be rescinded, and then the buildings can go up. Uh, I'm not sure about overlays. I just know they can be rescinded. So if there's a two-story limit now, can eventually it be rescinded and go up? And that's what we're worried about. Four-story buildings. If you know that part of the uh, terrain there, that's one of the high points in Ozark. And we don't want to see, as you come down Jackson or come off to Square, which is historic, the Kazee's home, but everybody knows the Kazee's home. And uh, then all of a sudden you just see a four storage building on the highest point in Ozark, one of the highest points. We're against it. We don't want R4, we want to kept R1. That's all I have to say, thank you. Thank you. Before uh, I, I do see your hand, sir, and I promise you, you will be at the podium. I just had a question for the director or for our city administrator. Uh, uh, on overlay districts, once it's agreed to, can they be rescinded? <clears throat> no. Um, That's okay. Yeah, all right. No. I, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> I, no, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, <laughs> I got my answer. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you for being here yourselves. We appreciate your service. 
My name is Leonard Frank. I live at 1302 West Parkview, right up on top, right back up against this land that we're talking about right now. now I don't want to talk about everything else we've talked about. I've been, a, I was a cop for 17 years in Nixa and in Christian County. I served 12 years with the Sheriff's Department here. And if apartments go up there, we're asking for a nightmare and you're gonna to have to hire a lot more police. And let's not even talk about our schools. We've got all those apartments on 65 going up. Where are the kids gonna go? They're gonna to go to Ozark schools. If we put apartments in there, where are those kids gonna go? They're gonna to to Ozark schools. My wife's a teacher, I'm a substitute teacher right now. And I joke with the teachers, where do they all come from? Because when the halls, when the classes go out, it is so crowded and the classes are crowded. And I think this would be a big mistake for our schools, for our traffic, and for law enforcement too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else in the audience that is speaking against the bill? I see no hands in the online. All right. There being no further request uh, for discussion from the public, then the public portion of the hearing is closed and we will move on to the next bill. And <clears throat> would there be, you would like some more discussion? <laughs> Before discuss right now, unless you want to discuss, so. all right. The hearing is closed. Next bill, please. I move that we place Bill 3481 on its first reading by title and description only. If we could have some. We could have some silence. Thank you. What was the motion, please, sir? Um, I move that we place Bill 3481 on its second reading, first reading by title only. Is there a second? Uh, Alderman Flores has moved to place bill number three, four, just want to make sure I'm looking at the right agenda, three, three, four, eight, one, on its first reading by uh, title and description only, that was seconded by Alderman Snyder, all in favor. An ordinance amending the municipal code of the city of Ozark, Missouri, section 21080, dog bites regarding holding dogs at the animal control facility for observation. Chief. Glad to see so many people are here to support me in this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hey. Uh, so as you're all aware, about two years ago, uh, animal control function came back underneath the police department in the city of Ozark. So for the last two years, we've just been trying to get the facility up to where we need it to be, uh, but also the policies and the ordinances that, that regulate how uh, we provide that function within the city. Um, and so really what we're doing is asking for a little help here. Um, something that we've realized over the last six to eight months, um, when we're doing dog bite investigations, Currently, our city code requires us uh, to quarantine that animal at a veterinary clinic for a period of 10 days for, op for clinical observation. What we found over the last six to eight months is that's very hard to find. Uh, a lot of our local vets know nothing against them. However, they're running a business and that's not always the best thing for their business. We are able to, to find suitable um, uh, places for this to get uh, for this to occur at different vet clinics. But what we're asking is for a little help in the event that we are unable to find a vet clinic that is willing to allow us to quarantine a dog there uh, for 10 days. Uh, we're asking that we be able to quarantine that animal within our animal control facility uh, that the city owns and operates, the, the police department owns and operates. Um, I'm here to assure you that we have that facility 
um, in order to where we can accomplish that safely and effectively, not only for our staff, but also the citizens of Ozark. Uh, this will also be a, a better convenience benefit, not only for our staff, but also the citizens. Um, so we're not having to potentially go outside of our city uh, to find suitable location for these to be quarantined. Be happy to answer any questions if anyone has any. Questions from the board. You've done it again. <laughs> You've scared us into silence, Chief. It's all my support. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We'll hold uh, bill number 3481 uh, for its uh, second reading next meeting. Oh, I beg your pardon. I got ahead of myself. There is a large audience here who might be in favor or against this uh, bill. So the public hearing is open. Anybody here that was wish to speak in favor of bill number 3481? You were wrong, Chief. They weren't here for you. <laughs> Anybody here opposed? Anybody online? There being no questions uh, or comments from the public, we'll close the public hearing. And unless there's comments from the board. And we will hold this over for the next meeting. Bill number 3482. Your Honor, I move that we place Bill 3482 on its first reading by title and description only. Second. Alderman Flores has moved to place Bill number 3482 on its first reading by title and description only. It was seconded by Alderman Snyder. All in favor. An ordinance amending the municipal code of the city of Ozark, Missouri, section 21070, release of dogs to owner and adding one new fee to the 2023 fee study. Chief. Glad to see no one left. Um, <laughs> So again, this is just another maintenance issue um, under the animal section of our, our current ordinance. Uh, if you read 210070 as it stands, um, it, it's a little bit convoluted. Uh, it depends on how many times a dog's been impounded in our animal control facility, um, the weight of that animal, subsequent offenses and stuff like that. What we're asking for is just to be able to establish a flat daily boarding fee um, that way we're not having to do math. Um, and also it's a much clearer expectation for staff to be able to provide to citizens if and when this happens, this is the daily boarding fee, regardless if your dog weighs 49 or 51 pounds, regardless if they've been in there before or anything. It's just a way that we can clear it and make it more concise. Any questions for the chief? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Anybody? Uh, anybody uh, uh, here that supports the bill that is willing to speak for it besides those who clapped, including those who clapped? No takers. Anybody online? Anybody here that wishes to speak against? Bill number 3482, any online? Any comments from the board? All right, hearing none and the uh, uh, with no members of the public wishing to speak, the public hearing is closed and bill number 3482 will be held over to for its second reading at our next legislative session. Bill number 3483. Your Honor, I move that we place Bill 3483 on its first reading by title and short description only. Okay. Alderman Flores has moved to place Bill number 3483 on its first reading by title and description only. That was seconded by Alderman Alder. All in favor. 
An ordinance authorizing the city to enter into the Main Street Program Agreement with the Missouri Main Street Connection and the Historic River District. <laughs> okay. Um, so we all know that uh, or we'll remember that we have a historic river district. The historic river district um, is uh, our main street of it. And um, in the beginning of the creation of that organization, uh, the main street program was a program that allows for your historic district to receive training, to go to conferences, to do the things that are necessary to be successful. And it also provides the opportunity for great funding for our downtown organization. <clears throat> what this agreement does, it allows for the city of Ozark to enter into an agreement so that we can continue to support that organization. Um, to answer your question, I believe the president of the Main Street organization is out here too. Uh, you may want to say something, I don't know, uh, but uh, that, that's what this one is does. And now we'll open the public hearing and Mr. Blankenship. Tim Bartholomew, 517 Bar Cedar Road. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah, I'm Tim Bartholomew, the president of the Stork River District. Thank you, Steve. The uh, contract you guys see in front of you, it's a contract between the Historic River District and Missouri Main Street. And um, they request and require a signature from the mayor of the city that's affiliated. There are no requirements put upon the city at all based on this contract. It's basically Missouri Main Street wants to make sure the city knows and understands what their Main Street affiliate is doing and wants to make sure that you guys know that we're affiliated with Missouri Main Street, basically. So it's there's no requirements for the city based on this particular contract. And uh, because I was slow in getting it to the city, we are a little bit behind in getting it to Missouri Main Street. So if there's a way to expedite the second reading, we would appreciate that. If not, we completely understand. We'll deal with the repercussions on the back end. There probably won't be any, but um, I'm here to answer any questions if you guys have any. Any questions from the board? Sounds like you knocked it out of the park, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, members of the public that wish to speak in favor of this bill, besides who we've heard from? Any online? Any members of the public wishing to speak against this bill? Any online? There being uh, no further comments from the public. The pub public hearing section is closed unless there are comments from the board. Alderman Alt. I'm excited about this and I'm, I think it's great that we have the historic river district and they're implementing this program. And I think it's wonderful. Thank you, Alderman Alder. Anybody else? All right, the public hearing is closed. Is there another motion as to this bill? I make a motion to place Bill 3483 on its second reading by title in short description only. Is there a second? There's a motion made by Alderman Flores to place bill number 3483 on its second reading by title and description only. It has been seconded by Alderman Snyder. All in favor. An ordinance authorizing the city to enter into the Main Street Program Agreement with the Missouri Main Street Connection and the Historic River District. This is a closed hearing, so it is for the board. Not, I mean, open to the public, but closed for board discussion. Are there any comments from the board <clears throat> as to bill number 3483? Alderman Flores. The only comment I would make is that uh, considering that this, this is just a formality agreement to make sure that the Historic River District keep going forward, um, I don't want to impose any uh, any penalties if there were any to, for being 
uh, late to submit this. So that's why I was in favor of going ahead and putting it on second reading. So I just wanted to say I do appreciate the historic river district as well. And and uh, I said we put it to a vote. Thank you, man. Thank you, Alderman Flores. Any other board discussion? And I will just add that uh, the historic river district has been an investment that has paid for itself for this taxpayers over and over and over. Getting grants, putting up the gazebo on the county, uh, on the public square there for the county, not just not putting it up, but restoring it, putting it to good use. Our events, Halloween, I'm looking forward to, and the historic tours, the Christmas uh, uh, events on the square, uh, and the, uh, I believe there's an Oktoberfest that is coming up as well. Uh, we really appreciate this all volunteer organization. In light of my comments, anybody else? Alderman Flores. Oh, Alderman Hodges. I would just like to say that um, this contract is really important because the state program holds us accountable, holds the HRD accountable uh, for the economic development portions of this program, which include uh, the cost of work done uh, on buildings on the square, the public uh, participation in uh, the public infrastructure and the value of that, how many jobs are created, how many jobs are lost, how many businesses are created, how many businesses are lost. So it's really an important measurement of the health of the downtown. And I think it's great the people who have spent give so much time and um because they believe in what the city's about which is the history and the character thank you alderman hutchinson any other comments there being no other comments the uh hearing is closed and we'll place it to a vote I move that we adopt Bill 3483 as Ordinance 23-062. There's a motion on the floor raised by Alderman Flores to place Bill number 3483, well, to make enacted as um, Ordinance number 23-062. Yes, sir. Seconded by Alderman Flores, or Alderman Alder. <laughs> All in favor? Or is it roll call vote? Yes, roll call. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Galloway? Aye. Alderman Alder? Aye. Alderman Flores? Aye. Alderman Snyder? Aye. Alderman Owen is absent. Alderman Hutchinson? Aye. We have five aye votes, motion carries. Very good. We have made it through the new bills part of the agenda. The time is 8.30. I will entertain a motion for a brief recess. All right. Chair calls five minute recess by acclamation. <laughs>
is called to order. It is time for resolutions. Resolution number 1990, Alderman Flores. I uh, make a motion to read resolution 1990. There's a motion in the floor to read resolution number 1990, raised by Alderman Flores, seconded by Alderman Alder. All in favor. A resolution approving the appointment of Ronnie Scheibler to the City of Ozark Board of Adjustment. Is anybody here to speak on the resolution? I'm prepared to make remarks, but I don't know if anybody else is. All right. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Ronnie uh, is someone that was suggested by, not suggested, was uh, really encouraged to apply for this position uh, by our mayor, Mr. Currents. Um, I have made inquiries about him, and one of the, his uh, one of the noteworthy, noteworthy characteristics uh, or qualities of him that people talk about is. Uh, a very reasoned, very uh, uh, not excitable. He he reaches reasons uh, conclusions is what I have heard. Um, by way of background, he is a <clears throat> military service member, having served in the military for 23 years, active duty I think for about three years, and uh, afterwards a National Guard. And I don't know if he was also. Uh, reserves. He is a trumpet player for his church. Um, he was a musician in the army, I believe. I could be wrong about that branch of service. Uh, he works in real estate, um, which is probably a good background for the board of adjustments for the issues that they deal with. Um, any other comments before we vote? I have a question for the city attorney. Is there also room for public comments or is it? Yes, you would open it up for okay. public comment. So we will open it up for a public hearing as to resolution number 1990. Any member of the public wish to speak in favor of the resolution? Online. There are no members of the public wishing to speak in favor. Any opposed that are present? Any online? No members of the public wish to uh, offer comment. So the public hearing is closed and it comes to a vote. I move that we adopt resolution 1990. Thank you. There's a motion to adopt resolution number 1990 made by Alderman Flores, seconded by Alderman Alder. All in favor. The resolution passes. There are no other resolutions. We will move on to second reading and final passage of bills. This. <clears throat> Beg your pardon. Yes, go ahead. I was fixing to place this on a second reading. Okay. And I was just uh, uh, going to explain that these bills, the discussion is not open to the public. It is board only. Alderman Steiner. Your Honor, I would like to place bill number 3474 on its second reading. My title and description only, please. Say it. There's a motion to place bill number 3474 on a second reading by title and description only, made by Alderman Snyder and seconded by Alderman Flores. All in favor. An ordinance authorizing the city to enter into a contract with Crawford Murphy and Tilly Incorporated for engineering services related to the transportation alternative program grant for the Chadwick Flyer Spur Trail. 
who wishes to speak on uh, and explain the bill. Yeah. Are there any questions? Alderman Snyder, you had your line. Oh, Alderman. No, no Alderman I, I think this is a, this is a good idea. Uh, this is just another step with the uh, connectivity of this, and uh, mm -hmm. I definitely think it's going to be advantageous to us. <clears throat> Thank you, Director Payne. Any other comments from the board? There being no comments, board discussion is ended. Is there a motion? Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion to adopt bill number 3474 as ordinance number 23-063. Second. There's a motion made by Alderman Steider to adopt bill number 3479 as ordinance number 23-063, and that has been seconded by Alderman Flores. Roll call vote. Uh, Alderman Flores? Aye. Alderman Hutchinson? Aye. Alderman Alder? Aye. Alderman Steider? Aye. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Galloway? Aye. Alderman Owen is absent. We have five aye votes, motion carries. Bill number 3475. Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion to place bill number 3475 on its second reading. My title inscription only, please. Second. There's a motion to place bill number 3475 on its second reading by title and description only, made by Alderman Snyder, seconded by Alderman Flores. All in favor. An ordinance authorizing the city to enter into a contract with AT Urban Development Incorporated for construction services. What? Looks like you answered them all in the first Thank reading. You. Thank you, Director Payne. Any discussion? Alderman Steiner? Yes, sir. Uh, when we previously had this on the first reading, I expressed some reservation about the uh, the construction and the, the problem that I perceive with some ADA compliance. Um, I believe if we move forward with this right now, it should be done for everyone. And we should take a step back to make this accessible as a whole to everyone that has any type of a handicap. I understand the terrain. I do understand what was explained, but I just believe if we're going to do this, we need to do it right. We were not given the second phase of this, although it was expressed that there would be a second phase. There's some uncertainty there. I believe we have a right to address every need for every citizen in our community. I also believe we need to make this, this particular thing accessible to everyone, everyone that has any type of a handicap. And I would also like to take that to our disabled veterans as well, because if it weren't for our disabled veterans, we may not have anything like this. As a matter of fact, I know we won't, but I would definitely um, like to express my reservations until we can do this right. Thank you, Alderman Snyder. Any other comments from the board? I will say that, oh, yes, Alderman Alderman. Um, I can understand your what you're saying, and I think um, I agree with the concept. But when I went to a lot of the national parks on uh, vacation, um, a lot of the places in the national parks you can't, uh, hand, some handicapped people can't, uh, because of the train, it's not accessible to them. A lot of, a lot of it was as much as they could. And I think this is the same situation. I think that to get it started uh, because of the train, maybe in the future we can look at getting it accessible in some other way other than where this trail goes. So um, <clears throat> on this case, I would vote yes for this, even though what you brought up was definitely a concern. Any other comments from board members? 
Alderman Hutchison. I think it's always a concern that we make all of the benefits of the city available to everyone. However, it's not always possible to do it all at once. And um, this is the first step. We as a board can make sure that the second, third steps are made in the future uh, to make it available, maybe in a video form or something uh, for people who have the disability to uh, climb that trail to get to the overlook. But at the same time, there are always obstacles to making it available to everyone. We can do our best, but that can fall to us as a board, to the elected officials to make sure that it happens in the future. This is just a first step that I think we need to go ahead and do, make. Thank you, Alderman Hutchison. Any other members of the board? I will uh, make my comments. Uh, the first, though, the mayor has asked me to relay his thoughts on this bill. I think the discussion has been very respectful about it, and I don't think he, I think he means it in that context. Uh, he uh, has a, a, a disability um, that interferes with his ability to to walk and it would interfere with his ability to walk on this path. Uh, but he asked uh, for me to express that uh, at least from his point of view, it should not stop the development of this path. Um, and <clears throat> uh, I think what was important to him was to open up the park as soon as we could to as many members of the public as we could so that it would uh, draw more attention uh, to the park. And then I will add um, that uh, I think that's true and it uh, does fit with the attention that was brought by comments by Alderman Snyder and the uh, first reading and concerns that were raised um, uh, by other aldermen that <clears throat> it is important for this board uh, that uh, we take seriously the idea of connectivity that was presented when it was uh, made by uh, Director Payne, when this was discussed by Director Payne, that the existence of this pathway would lead us with opportunities for ADA, uh, uh, sorry, ADA compliant uh, pathways to the FEN uh, that are supported by grants and additional public funding. She said that the it was cost prohibitive for us to do it right. Um, and I think, again, that opening it up to the public getting the public involved will, along with our will, that we want this to be enjoyed by every member, I think it will uh, draw city attention and I bet we will find some from some grants. Uh, so for that reason, um, I support uh, this bill. In light of my comments, any other comments? All right, Alderman Flores, or Alderman Snyder, excuse me. Yes, Your Honor, uh, due to the fact that I've expressed my, uh, my dissatisfaction with it, it is still the professional thing to do to bring this bill forward, and that's what I intend to do for a vote. But I uh, make a motion to adopt bill number 3475 as ordinance number 23-064. Second. There was a uh, motion on the floor made by Alderman Snyder, seconded by Alderman Flores, to adopt bill number 3457 as ordinance number 23-064. Roll call vote. Uh, Alderman Owen is absent. Alderman Snyder? Nay. Alderman Alder? Aye. Alderman Flores? Aye. Alderman Hutchinson? 
Alderman Galloway? Aye. Excuse me. All right, we have four aye votes, one absent, one nay vote. Motion carries. Bill number 3477. I move that we place bill number 3477 on its second reading by title and description only. So motion made by Alderman Flores, seconded by Alderman Snyder to place bill number 3477 on its second reading by title and description only. All in favor. An ordinance authorizing the city to enter into a contract with Crawford Murphy and Tilly Incorporated for engineering services related to the Chadwick Flyer Trail overpass. Any administration comments? Any board comments? Alderman Flores. Just wanted to say how how great of a step I think this is to know that we're actually getting this designed and we're moving forward with that to be able to cross over 65. We've been talking about this for a long time and it seemed like such a just a long ways away and it's neat to to get this far with it. So that's that's what I wanted to convey. And uh, I will add that I was. Uh, talking today about someone who had expressed reservations about the Chadwick Flyer to me in the past. He may have forgotten it, but I didn't. Um, and uh, he was talking today. Uh, we were talking about, in fact, the uh, uh, trail overpass going over 65. And he told me he and his wife had invested in electric bicycles. <laughs> And uh, uh, in anticipation of, of, uh, of this Chadwick Fire uh, Trail. In light of my comments, any other comments? Yeah. Board discussion is, oh, sorry. With board discussion is open to all. Alderman Hutchinson. It's exciting to see a vision become a reality. And I just wanna compliment staff because they've taken that vision and they found the way to fund it and the way to make it happen. And that would not have happened without a lot of uh, public involvement with other communities, without building the trust that's taken years to happen. And I, and I just wanted to say thank you for that. Well, well that's that. Thank you very much. Thank you. thank you, Alderman Hutchison. Any further board discussion? Then board discussion is closed. Alderman Flores. I move that we adopt Bill 3477 as Ordinance 23-065. There's a motion on the floor made by Alderman Flores and seconded by Alderman Hutchison uh, to place to enact bill number 3477 as ordinance number 23-064, roll call vote. Alderman Hutchinson. Aye. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Galloway. Aye. Alderman Alder. Aye. Alderman Owen is absent. Alderman Flores. Aye. Alderman Snyder. Aye. We have five aye votes, motion carries. Bill number 3478. I move that we place Bill 3478 on its second reading by title only. There's a motion made by Alderman Flores, seconded by Alderman Snyder, to place Bill number 3478 on its second reading by title and description only. All in favor. <laughs> An ordinance amending the budget of the City of Ozark, Missouri for the 2023 fiscal year. <clears throat> Any staff comments? Sure. Um, Your Honor, uh, the budget amendments that were proposed uh, were done so that, so that the city can complete a lot of important projects. We are in a stage of growth. Uh, we are in a stage of great uh, potential. And we have found a way to continue doing what we do by maximizing the federal and state dollars uh, along with our matching from local uh, funds. So um, the budget 
amendment proposal that you're looking at tonight um, does that. It, it achieves a lot of the projects that the city had on their list and very proud to bring it forward. Um, if you have any questions, we have an answer. Alderman Florence. Oh, you know, that's just me leaving my mic. Up. It's a $5 fine. <laughs> any questions of city administrator Childress from members of the board? Board discussion? I'll, there being, oh, Alderman oh, Flores. I was going to make the motion. Very well. I move that we adopt Bill 3478 as Ordinance 23 066. There's a motion made by Alderman Flores to adopt Bill number 3478 as Ordinance number 23 065, seconded by Alder, Alderman Alder following the, the close of board discussion. All in favor? Oh, sorry, roll call vote. And it's bill number 23065. Is, I or 66, that? excuse me, that's what we're ready for. 066. Yes. Very well. Do I need to read that again or? I don't very think well. so. No. Alderman Alder? Aye. Alderman Owen is absent. Alderman Hutchinson? Alderman Galloway? Is Mayor Pro Tem Galloway? Aye. Alderman Flores? Aye. Alderman Snyder? Aye. We have five aye votes. Motion carries. That ends our second reading and final passage of bills. Congratulations to those members of the public who stuck it out. Um, reports of officers, boards, and committees. Sir, the city administrator does not have any new information. Uh, it's about to be all passed along. It's going to be the department board. Planning and development. Do you have any questions? Any questions of the board for Director Smith? Hearing none. I think. No. Oh, seeing one. Huey <laughs> <laughs> McDews, when's it going to open? I don't have a firm date on that, but they're getting closer by the day. I would say they're probably in two to three months, they'll be right open. Okay, um, thank you. Yeah. Other questions of Mr. Smith while he is up at the podium? Parks and Recreation. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about our summer camp. I want to do a quick summary, but first we can talk about the um, membership numbers. We are 460 over where we were in 2022. Uh, Festival of Frights is coming up. It is sponsored this year by Night Heating and Air Conditioning. It is October 28th. It's at the OC from 530 to 930. Our biggest obstacle with that is space. Um, we try and not compete with the um, police department's event. So ours is usually the Saturday before. Uh, last year, the line was out the door. So we're trying to figure out when we have big events, our biggest thing is where's the line going to go? That's always the trick us figuring that out. So um, I think we had over 1500 people attend the event last year. So it'll be good this year. Um, will you go to the summer camp stuff? It's the summer camp packet. It should be in there. Oh, there it is. There we go. Okay, so I wanted to do a little recap of summer camp. We had 316 campers this year. It was over the course of 61 days. We have 48 staff that run that camps, and we took 198 field trips with five buses. Um, lots of kids, lots of staff, a um, few incident reports, but nothing terrible. Just bumps, bruises, and lots of Band-Aids, really, this summer. Um, I wanted to kind of talk about some of the survey. Every year we do a internal recap of any large event that we have and summer camp is no different. We get everyone who is involved in it from our lifeguards, our, our camp counselors, concession staff, and we all come into a room and we basically say like, how do we fix this? What did you like? What did you, what did you not like? And what would you do differently? So we do a recap and we talk about how we're gonna change these and make them better for next year. I would encourage you to go ahead and read some of these uh, surveys that we had. Um, 
75% strongly agreed that their child was safe on field trips. And that's 100% either agreed or strongly agreed. You know, there's always those people that will never say 100% that I strongly agree. I'm one of those people. I can't, I can't do it. So um, I'm proud of that for the staff. Um, communication was good. Um, it's a great program. I'm, I'm very excited about it. I know Hayden's listening to me right now. So Hayden and your staff, you guys are awesome and I appreciate you. Um, I want to talk about who we are serving. Uh, a lot of our kids come from Ozark, but we also have a lot of the surrounding areas. 411 registrations were received and 304 of them were from Ozark addresses. We had 44 kids come from Nixa. We had 16 from Springfield, 19 from Sparta, three drove from Seymour, nine drove from Rogersville, and three drove from Billings. We also had one from Highland Hill, one from Fordland, one that came all the way from Stratford, one that came from Clever, and two that came from Marshfield. So I think that that speaks um, a lot for our program and that people are willing to drive their kids this far. And uh, you can see the map where we, we touch all these kids' lives. Um, I wanted to go over a couple of the comments because I think they're really awesome. One of the surveys said, it amazes me every year how awesome the staff performs. They are, they are with a lot of kids every day and they have never seemed tired, exasperated, or frustrated. They are angels. So I love that one. And then the other one was, <clears throat> this is our second summer. There cannot, there, I cannot say enough about how amazing the staff is here. I never worried about my daughter when she was there. They took such great care of her. She literally talked about them at home. She begged to go back this year. Our child loves you guys. We're sad summer is over. So I just want to say again that I think it's one of the best programs in the area, and um, I appreciate all the staff for working so hard to um, keep it a safe summer for all of our kids. So thank you. Any questions, Director Payne? Um, thank you, Sam. You do a great job. We appreciate you. In light of the fact that we have people from the public that stuck around, uh, there were uh, several major park initiatives that were initiated a few years ago, and you've heard comments on them uh, throughout uh, the meeting. Uh, one is Garrison Springs Park. That came about through the hard work of staff, particularly at parks, and securing grants that helped us pay for it. We would not have a park if it hadn't been for money from federal grants and state grants to get it. Uh, the Chadwick Flyer Trail, something that uh, was born years ago, uh, taken uh, by the board many years ago and staff uh, together uh, and made a goal and that is really moved along. And then the final thing is if you haven't noticed we are a bit underserved by parkland. Our parkland is in the center part of our town because that was built at a time when the city could afford parks that served parkland that served all of its people when it was smaller. And that was because it was funded by a sales tax and everybody uh, stayed in Ozark, lived in Ozark, shopped in Ozark, paid in Ozark, paid sales tax in Ozark. That's not the case anymore. They're uh, buying online, I'm not blaming them, and shopping in Springfield because most of us get up and go to work and run or return home. There are all these avenues to get back to Ozark. And if you notice, they all have grocery stores on them. And that is on purpose. It is to collect our tax revenue for the benefit of Springfield. And what that has meant is that parks, uh, among other things, has been uh, underfunded. And a way to address that in addition to the uh, Chadwick Flyer Trail and the grants that were obtained for that and the cooperation with those are greenways, but also uh, Garrison Springs Park with its major grants to acquire that land. Programming for kids. That part of the, the report that you heard today was a question of energy and effort that really did originate from the Parks Department 
to make sure that we served as many people as we could. We couldn't give them the land, but we gave their families programs. And I appreciate Parks Department, Director Payne for doing that. Any, well, I think we have reached the end of officer board and committee reports. Miscellany comments, announcements for members of the board and or the mayor. Hearing none, I will entertain a motion. Move to adjourn. <laughs> I did my life. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he was trying to I just wanted to thank the audience. I'm so excited. I appreciate you coming and, and having input and listening to us. We're not always real exciting, but we carry on the city business. Please come back in two weeks. We'd love to see you. Thank you. All right. Now I'll entertain a motion. There is a uh, motion to adjourn made by Alderman Snyder and seconded by Alderman Alder. All in favor? We are adjourned. You did.